Hello, today we're going to do a service on a VW 2007 EOS TDI. So first of all we need to unscrew the metal plate under the engine. And there are two types of screws. We first of all have this bolt here that has a splined hole but we have found that a half inch socket fits best. So we also have this T25 screw and this torque is what I use to unscrew. As you can see in the picture, the shield is quite big and there are a lot of screws. You have to move all of these, but make sure that you're safe when doing so. Right, so we found eight of these bigger bolts and we had four of these smaller screws but we were missing some so you may be missing some as well so what I'm going to do with these now is put them somewhere safe because we're going to make sure we can put these back properly later and our metal plate so today we're going to do the air filter we're going to change that we're going to do an engine flush and then we're going to also change the engine filter so we've also got the oil sump plug that we're going to change because it's recommended to do so when you change the oil um, and it also helps prevent any leaks so we're going to begin by changing the air filter so our air filter is going to go in here you know this because we have the symbol on the front there so to get in here we have to unscrew these posi screws here and I believe there are eight all together. Yeah. Make sure that you have a good fitting um, screwdriver because if you damage the screws um, you're buggered. Well for health and safety reasons I shouldn't really be wearing this bracelet because it could get caught in any of these things at all with the battery on there if I touch that with my bracelet I could injure myself I could get sapped. We've undid the screws um, they don't come all the way out which is quite handy but we don't have to disconnect any of this at the back because this will just lift out and then we can have good access to the filter it should just pop out. So looking at this we can clearly see it's very dirty full of bogs and gunk so it definitely needs replacing. So looking actually inside the box here there's um, just a few bits of dirt that just needs cleaning out. If there's anything like mud or anything like that you just need to give it a good clean before putting in the new air filter. Right so we're going to put the new air filter back into the box. And it should just pop straight in like that. Lovely. And then all we have to do now is put the lid back on and put the screws back down. Secure it. So it's good practice not to do them all up tight one at a time, it's just to good to go round, tighten them up and then when you put them all down to go round and tighten them all up after, making sure that they're all done up as tight as you can. So okay, that's the air filter done, now on to the next job. So now we're moving on to the engine flush. We just have to put this into where the um, engine oil goes and we're going to leave that for 20 minutes. So we're going to put that in, leave the engine running and have a cup of tea. Before I open this up and pour in the flush, I'm going to take off the cover. Let's move that out of the way. 
and this one. Right, so there we go. Open that one up. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really use a funnel because there's like a stopper in the way, so I have to be very, very careful when pouring in the engine flush. I hope not to spill any, or I don't want it going. And so we don't really want to pour it from a height because that will likely to be more spillage. So we want to get in low and get as close as we can to the bottom. I don't like this at all. I'm going to spill it everywhere. Well, I was really worried that I was going to make a mess of this. So by using the carrier bag we decided to leave a hole in there. So hopefully that will catch any spillages if there are any. Keeping the engine nice and clean. Good old trusted carrier bag. Now just to screw that up and get the engine going. running for about 20 minutes we need to now start thinking about getting the oil into a large pan draining it into here um, it's very important not to drive the car while there is still the engine flush in it because it will damage the engine so we're using a proper oil pan because the oil when you drain it can be quite hot and we don't want the container to melt and it has to be big enough to hold around about four or five litres of oil. Now we need to take out the 19 mil sump plug out. I like to use the six sided socket because um, it just fits better, less likely to damage it. Whereas if you're using the star one, it won't work as well. I'm going to be using a long handle driver because the longer it is, the more leverage you have. So. Um, for me that will be easier because if I'm weak it means I don't have to put as much force onto it and so that will just clip onto there nicely hopefully there we go and then we go to switch the engine off um, it's really important to drain the oil while it is hot but we're just going to wait a little while because it is going to be well over 90 degrees and we don't want to scold ourselves the sump plug is located on the far end of the engine so you'll have to reach underneath to get to it. Bit of a tight squeeze under here, a bit tricksy to get the socket onto the bolt there. Um, you have to be very careful when I'm doing this because as soon as you undo it the oil is going to come out and you don't want to get too close because otherwise the oil is going to fall straight onto your face. Have the pan ready for it for when it does undo. And here we go. It's so tough. It's not going. Undoing the sump plug was quite difficult in the end. We had to, first of all, we had to make sure that the car was flat. So we had to move the car along a bit. Then we had to knock the wrench with the hammer to get a bit more force on there because it was very, very difficult to undo. While the oil is draining into the pan, we're going to change the oil filter and we're going to use a 32mm spanner to do that, which is this one here. And I'm just going to go ahead and undo the oil filter. It's um, they also drip oil, so it's important to have something handy like tissue to catch any of the oil spillages. So it's loose. I'm done. The oil filter was just clipped inside there, so you had to, you had to pull it out. 
Um, you have to be very careful because there was quite a bit of oil in there. Um, so have something ready to put it onto to prevent um, getting oil absolutely everywhere. Um, so what we just need to know is just to clean this up. With the old filter, just make sure that you dispose of it according to your regulations in your area. So we still have the old ring on here, which we're going to have to take off and we're going to have to replace it with the new one. You have to be very careful not to get any dirt or debris in there because if that goes then onto the into here, it will then go into your engine and it will knock your engine. So the new filter just plugs in there. And I've seen that the click means that it is in. So let's try and get this rubber ring off. And the other one is now going to go on over the top. Let's try and thin it on, roll it. Oh, I got it! It's on. Mm. And all the way to the end. Like so. Right, now we're going to put the new filter back in. All we have to do is just pop it inside and do it back up. So what I'm going to do now is just give this a good clean around the outside so that if there is any leakage later when I check, you can see better that it's just got the oil that we spilt now, it's actually leaking from there. So now that the oil filter has been changed, we now have to put the new supplement back in before putting in the new oil. As you can see, there's actually a lot of oil in this bucket more than what we expected. What we have to do is we have to try and get this into another container so we can take it to um, our recycling place and we can get it recycled there. What we need to do now is replace the oil in 4.3 litres of 5W30 into here. Um, it's really important to use the right oil for the engine. check that the oil that you're pouring in isn't coming back out the other end. I'm going to leave this about five minutes before running the engine because it takes a while for the oil to go around. So here we have the dipstick. It's clearly written on here, min, it's down here and max just above that rim there. Um, it didn't look quite like the pictures that we expected, it's slightly different. Um, but when we first checked the oil, the oil was way above the max there. Oh, so we wiped it clean first, then we just pop it where the orange nozzle is, push it right the way down till it clicks, then pull it out 
for your reading. Careful not to spill any of the oil there. Okay, so it's just important to fill it up when necessary. We're just going to put in a, another 150 or so mils to bring it up that a little bit higher. Now, the reason why you should overfill the engine oil is because it will damage the engine. But if you do overfill, it means getting back under and undoing the sump plug again and letting some of the oil out. So let's recap what we've done today. We've taken off the oil pan from underneath the car changed the air filter, we then flushed the engine, we then drained the oil, oil filter, we then put the new oil in and here we are, we put the cover back on top. So we are going to leave the panel off for a little while longer, about 20 miles because we just want to keep track of whether there's any oil leakage still, because there is, it's probably due to the fact that the bolts aren't done up tight enough. And if I can't tighten them up anymore, then it'll be worth taking it back to the garage, which they'll only charge maybe a few pounds or a few dollars to then tighten up for you. Thank you for watching, and this was me servicing my Volkswagen EOS TDI. Thank you very much.